بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم رسپیکٹڈ آڈینس ٹوڈے مائی ٹاپک آف ڈسکشن از اباؤٹ آکولر سیفلیز دس از اے فوٹو گراف آف اے ففٹی فور ایئر اولڈ پیشنٹ ہو پرزینٹیڈ ٹو ایمرجنسی ود ریڈ کنجسٹڈ آئی دیر واز پین ان دا آئی آلسو ود منیمل ڈسچارج یو کین سی ہیئر how the eye is inflamed, red and uh, congested. If the patient presented into emergency, after examination, we started uh, to do his uh, fundus examination, his visual equity was 20-20 both eyes, pressure was normal. On fundus examination, there were pigmentary changes in both the retina. Uh, pigmentary clumps over there we found over there and uh, so we decided to go for the uveitis workup. When we, we did the uveitis workup uh, hey, we found out that his uh, uh, VDRL was uh, positive and uh, HIV negative and uh, his PPT after 24 and 48 and 72 hours was uh, also negative. But while on examination, when we did put the phenylephrine eye drops in the eye, 10%, the ciliary vessels, uh, the scleral vessels were not blanching. So after consultation with infectious control department, this patient uh, well, diagnosis was made about the ocular syphilis. And uh, we started him on uh, IV penicillin G. Uh, 3 million units to 4 hourly for 14 days and after uh, starting this uh, penicillin IV after 8 hours and the PPD was negative uh, then under the cover of antibiotics we also started him oral prednisolone 1 milligram per kg body weight which was later tapered off gradually and uh, as the eye was very much congested inflamed so we advised him bradford eye drops topical and atropine eye drops atropine eye drops to stabilize uh, to dilate the eye to break the spasm and to stabilize the blood aqueous barrier and the topical eye drops just to control the inflammation locally in the eye as i earlier told that the inflammation the ciliary vessels Uh, were not blanching with even phenylephrine test. So along with that, to comfort, soothing effect, lubricants were also prescribed. So you can see again another photograph, how much the 360 degrees ciliary congestion is there, the eyes inflamed, red, and uh, this is only in the one eye, the other eye was not affected. Another slit limb, The cross section it is being shown in the cornea. The eye you can see. Uh, you can, if you please concentrate on the limbus, you will appreciate the vessels are deeply which were engorged and so uh, inflamed over there and congested. The deep vessels. Other eye, as I told you earlier, it is a quiet eye, no ciliary congestion, no inflammation, and. Uh, PC was quiet, no pain, nothing. Another view of the left eye, here you can see perfectly normal, no abnormality. His people were dilated in both eyes to see the fundi, but one thing was there, that fundi were involved in both eyes. Left fundus photograph, here you can appreciate that superiorly, especially, they were sub pigment clumping over there, like bony spicules, inferior there also, but if you please concentrate superiorly, just over the disc, you will see the changes over there. Otherwise, the disc is normal, the, there is no element of vasculitis, no perivascular sheathing, nothing like that. Just these pigmentary clumps which were there. Another better view, here you can see, that uh, these pigmentary clumps occasionally scattered superiorly going in the mid-periphery to periphery, especially the mid-peripheral area which is involved 
otherwise the blood vessels are normal no element of vasculitis active inflammation is not there left eye on this photograph here are also the uh, pigmentary changes perhaps this is in this slide it is not very much uh, good appreciated but if you concentrate inferiorly there are some changes over there otherwise the disc macula everything looks normal in the blue arrow uh, you can see the pigment clumps over there how in syphilis these changes happen in the retina these pigmentary clumps are not specific for the syphilis they can happen in any disease where the retina is under stress it may be because of retinitis pigmentosa any inflammatory diseases i'm talking posterior uveitis intermediate uveitis Exu long standing exudative retinal detachment so there are multi of diseases well of diseases in differential diagnosis but talking particularly about this patient we found these changes it is better shown than the previous slide scattered not too much abundant but they are definitely over there rpe better shown in this uh, found this photograph i mentioned earlier that we found out that this patient was having uh, scleritis element over there so we wanted to know whether the posterior scleritis is also there or not so we decided to go for the ultrasound b scan and in b scan we did not find uh, any thickening in the posterior segment uh, nothing like that and uh, the posterior scleritis element was ruled out although although that uh, macular surface was not smooth in b scan but uh, otherwise it was normal mild to moderate vitreous opacities were documented over there so no posterior scleritis for such type of activities are there we also go for oct macula we did it oct macula to see whether this patient has got macular edema or not it was negative this is the right oct macula no thickening nothing like that normal contour no fluid normal thickness so normal shown that the pigmentary changes were there in both eyes but uh, scleritis was in the right eye only so considering both eyes changes we did the oct both eyes and it was normal even in the other eye there were no changes over there no fluid nothing edema normal thickness normal contour if you look at the hands of the patient over there and the soles of the feet and the palms you will see their pigmentary brownish changes these are the macules the flat pigmentary lesions on the skin and uh, they are the body response the body reacts when the invading organism Uh, dies over there because of the immunity over there the body reacts and these discoloration patches develop over there in the skin you can see in the palms and the soles of the patient so as i mentioned the treatment was given iv penicillin g millions of units were given over 14 days there is a specific protocol uh, oral uh, prednisolone was given and after that tapering dose was done and the patient showed very good recovery this is the picture after the treatment a few pigment clumps are there but the otherwise the aqueous uh, the chamber is normal uh, no more seal recongestion the most important thing was the pain and the seal recongestion all those things so the seal recongestion has settled down and one thing i want to mention when the day patient presented we put him also on the ibuprofen 400 mg non steroidal anti inflammatory drug to control the element of scleritis severe pain and tenderness the syphilis how it is called this is called caused by the trypanosoma pallidum this is a spirochete which if infects the eye this is the picture of that one you can see and we will discuss how it is transmitted in the next slide Trypanosoma is basically human to human transmission. There no is no animal reservoir in this. It transmits from human to human, and basically sexually transmitted disease from one to other spouse or partners to other partners it goes. 
So actually, the uh, we we do the basic screening tests are the non-treponemal and treponemal tests. Non-treponemal tests are those tests which are carried out as screening. For example, uh, when the microorganisms attacks body, there are certain biomarkers which are released from the bodies. Yes, and these body biomarkers, when they are released from the body. Uh, the VDRL test, venereal disease research laboratory test, and the uh, other test is the RPR test. These tests are done to find out that uh, this is uh, disease is detected or not detected. So the VDRL test is usually done, and as I mentioned, it was positive in these patients. It usually gets positive in one to two weeks. But after it is uh, earlier in the disease, after two weeks, three weeks, it is very sensitive. You can get into 99% in secondary syphilis. But after the treatment, its uh, positivity decreases. It comes up to the 70%. And once the treatment has been done, it becomes negative. So VDRL test is basically during the treatment and treatment monitoring it is done. So, in the future, there will be chances of doing PCR, but usually our traditional workup is that we can go for VDRN test or RPR, and if positive, if positive with these non-treponemal tests, we can go for the treponemal tests. The treponemal test especially, specifically detects the antibodies against these uh, invading antigens. So what are the different uh, these treponemal tests? We have uh, uh, fluorescent antibody tests. We have ELISA, and these are uh, with their own pros and cons. Uh, these tests are uh, more authentic in detection than the treponemals. A direct way to do it. If we talk about the relapses, twenty-five percent chances are there that the patient may develop again this disease if not properly treated. The other thing is differential diagnosis. Any patient presenting with uh, pigmentary clumps like this is not a uh, syphilis patient. We have to take the history proper in detail. We have to go for the, as I mentioned, very important tests. These are the syphilis profile. We have to do it HIV also. We have to do it, uh, his, especially talking about this patient. He did not have that much uh, leukocytosis, but his ESR was raised, 67. And uh, even it is recommended that once uh, these patients uh, have got advanced syphilis, uh, their patient uh, should go even uh, in literature it has been recommended for CSF analysis to rule out neurosyphilis. So in differential diagnosis there are multiple things like uh, you can say the intermediate juliages, retinitis pigmentosa even gives these changes. You have to think about the SLE, tuberculosis, Bechet's disease, all these things, and uh, cytomegalovirus, all these things can mimic like this. So we have to be very careful when we are deciding all these things. Now we're coming towards the complications. The number of complications, ocular we talk, patient may develop later on and in any stage, not in the earlier, corneal opacities, he may develop because so much ciliary congestion, so many things are going over there in the eye. They are very prone to develop uh, glaucoma, macular edema, uh, CNVM, coronal scarring, optic atrophy, pupillary abnormalities, Archer Robertson pupils, so many over there things. But our patient was uh, basically having this uh, scleral uh, element and his retina was involved and he showed very good recovery after this. And uh, usually in these uh, conditions, uh, both spouses uh, should undergo these uh, investigations and they should, if there is a positivity, they should be treated. I want to thank my respected audience for their attention and uh, attendance. I hope this presentation will be beneficial for them.